Now I'm going to go through the dials on the front of the ACDC. The first one here is called pre-gas. This one here adjusts the gas before the arc ignites. So I can come down, pull my trigger, the gas will flow, flow up around my tungsten before they activate the arc. Now this has the advantage of having the gas shield around the weld pull and the tungsten before the arc is struck. And this will help with not oxidizing the tungsten and giving us a lot better start. When we're doing long leads, we'll quite often have it up a little way so the gas has time to come up the long leads. When we have shorter leads, we can turn that down. The next one along here is what we call peak current, or the main current that adjusts when we want to put more energy into the job or less energy into the job. And this machine here will go up to 200 amps maximum and down to about 10 amps for low amp TIG. We'll adjust that to suit the amount of energy we need and away we go. The next knob in the line that we've got on the ACDC is base current. Now base current only works when we've got it switched into the pulse mode. So I'm going to switch it up into the pulse mode. Now when I bring it into the pulse mode, we bring in base current, pulse frequency, peak current and pulse width. The next knob that I'm going to have a look at is downslope. Downslope is used to fill up the little crater and the pinhole that can be formed at the end of TIG welding. Some people like a lot of downslope, some people like a little downslope, but you have to have enough just to let the puddle freeze over. So when I come along and I let my finger off the trigger, downslope will wind the amperage down and this will allow the puddle to freeze so we don't get the little pinhole at the end. I personally like it set up about one to one and a half seconds, which should be about there. The knob down here, this one here is called arc force. And arc force is mainly used when we're using an, a welding electrode. And what it means is that when we cut down and touch the job, strike the arc, the machine will reach out and grab more amperage and more energy to get the arc going. You see the little leg here? The more we turn that up, the more energy it's going to reach out and grab to help the electrode get going. Now there is a trick that I have learned with these types of machines over the years, is that when you're doing TIG welding, this knob should be set at zero. When you're arc welding, I like a 50% or something like that. But I will say it again, when you're TIG welding, you put it on to zero. If you don't put it on to zero, it means that when you're TIG welding, the tungsten will reach out and grab more energy at the start and possibly burning a hole through your job. Now we're going to talk about pulse frequency. Pulse frequency is this knob here. And the pulse frequency determines how fast we go from the peak current down to the base current. Peak current, base current. Now quite often this is a personal preference. Myself, I quite like the pulse to run quite slow. More talented welders than me tend to turn the pulse up a bit. This is a personal preference. But to start with, I recommend you set the pulse down at around about 2 to 3.5 pulses per second, which is down there. The next knob along here is called pulse width. Now pulse width determines how long on pulse that it stays at the peak current. So if I have it set there, we have it setting at 50% of the peak current, 50% of the base current, 50% of the peak current, 50% of the base current. Now this changes the way we have penetration into the workpiece or the amount of energy, or we can cool the amount of energy going into the workplace with the pulse. My theory is start at 50%, when you get used to pulse, then play with it. We're going to talk a bit about pulse welding. Pulse welding is where we take a peak current and a base current and we switch between them. Peak current, base current, peak current, base current. The peak current we can set on the machine itself. An example would be we'll set the peak current at 100 amps. And then we've got to select a base current. Now a good base current is always about 40% of the peak current. So in my example we have a peak current of 100 amps, we'll set the base current at 40 amps. So 100 amps, 40 amps. 
So now we can put a bit of heat into the plate, get it really going, and then we can allow it to cool down and freeze. The next one here is how long the pulse stays on for. Now, you can have a fast pulse or a slow pulse. I particularly like pulses around two and a half to three and a half seconds, but that is personal. So we can set that on the dial and the front of the machine as well. So overall, we have the pulse frequency. Now, the pulse width is the difference between how long the base current stays on to the peak current. A good starting point for pulse width or pulse duty is 50-50. 50% of the time at the peak current, 50% of the time at the base current. Now the advantages of pulse are several. First and foremost, we can work out a position without the puddle flowing away from us. So we can hold the puddle nice and tight and it's a lot easier to weld out of position. The second one, it helps minimize distortion because we're not getting a too far a radiated heater out. So it's really good if we just want to do thinner materials or put less heat into the material itself. Pulse is good for bridging gaps. It means that we can put a little bit of heat in there, allow it to fuse, and then the puddle to freeze so we don't melt the hole through. So pulse is very useful. When you're starting up a machine, always remember to learn without pulse to start with and then set yourself up using the pulse setup and having a go and finding out where it suits the type of welding that you want to do. This one, next one along is called AC balance or AC cleaning depending on what terminology you use. When you first set up the welder I always recommend that you set it up at 50%. Now this means that the top half of the cycle and the bottom half of the square wave cycle, which I'll show on the board, will be equal. We can unbalance the wave by making it to the right, and this will give us more heat into the tungsten. If we turn it to the left, this will give us less heat into the tungsten, but more penetration into the workpiece. Now here's another tip. When you put a brand new tungsten in for aluminium, we want to be able to adjust it and get a nice ball on the end of the tungsten. I always wind that round to there, get the ball on my tungsten, and then turn it back. The other thing with the AC balance is that it only works when you have the switch up here switched into AC. When you have it into DC, it's always preferable to set it at 50-50. But when you're adjusting it, it will only adjust when you're in AC mode. With different technologies and welders today, we have different waves form than we used to have when we're setting up the old AC welders. This is now when the machine is set in the AC mode. In the old days, we had what we used to call a sine wave, which had a wave form like that. The new machines, like the BW T200 ACDC, has a wave form that's square. Now this has several advantages. First and foremost, we gain a little bit of energy in the corners. This means that what we used to do at 100 amps on the old sine wave, we can now do with 85 amps on the square wave. The next biggest advantage is that we can play with the AC balance. This is the adjustable dial on the front, which I've gone through on the machine itself. And doing this, we can change the way that the energy goes into the workpiece and the tungsten and what it can do for us. First and foremost, we can make the top half stay on a bit longer, which is electrode positive, and this gives us more cleaning. So when we're using dirtier outside aluminiums, etc., we can use the more cleaning cycle and do a better job. But just be aware that when you're using it on this side, the tungsten positive side gives a higher energy to the tungsten and you have the possibility of a tungsten overheat. So just be aware of that. Now we can also change it so we have the bottom half staying on longer. This is to do, will make the electrode negative and this gives us more penetration into the job. The advantage of running it this direction is that we can put more energy into thicker materials and get a higher amount of input and also the tungsten runs cooler. So AC balance has some several advantages but just beware of its downsides. When you have a balanced wave that looks like that. If we have an unbalanced wave it can look like the top one here or the bottom one there.
The last knob we're going to look at is post flow. When I let my trigger go and wind down, I take it off, the arc goes into downslope, and then the arc stops. The gas will keep going. This is to stop the tungsten from oxidizing. If you have an oxidized tungsten, you get a bad restart. The other thing it stops is oxidization of the whirlpool. It's a very, very important knob that people forget. Now, as a rule of thumb, you should have one second for every 10 amps. One second for every 10 amps. So you need to look at the amperage you're using. So if you're using high amperage, the knob will be up around here. If you're losing lower amperage, you can have the knob set down there. Don't forget it. Set it properly. You're not wasting your gas if you use it properly. You're getting better starts, better tungsten life, and more protection at the finishing of your weld.